Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Welcome to Layout Building. In this episode, I'm going to finish up work on our O-scale shelf layout in our game room. After a long time and a lot of work, our game room is almost finished. The plan is to build a shelf layout below the soffit around the edges of the room up near the ceiling. This is going to be a simple display loop with no turnouts and we're doing it in 3-rail O-scale. In the last episode, we hung the shelves and installed the track. In this episode, we'll be wiring the layout, finishing the bridge, and running a train. Back when we had the walls ripped apart, I installed wiring to carry power up to the area where the O-scale layout was going to be. I set it up using banana plug connectors since they were readily available at a local hardware store. The receptacles I found have four connectors, but I'm only going to use two of them. If I ever need a couple more wires in the future, they're already in place. I'll need to make some connector wires to get power from the banana plugs to the track. The Lionel terminal track I installed near the upper banana plugs in the last episode has fork connectors already. I'm going to set up the wires with banana plugs on one end and fork connectors on the other, then use this small terminal block to tie them together. I also installed a second terminal track on the opposite side of the room. For now I'm going to leave this terminal track disconnected, but if I end up having issues with voltage drop, the fork connectors will make it easy to run another pair of wires around the room. I'm using red and black 14 gauge stranded wire to make my connections. The red wire is for the center rail. I've cut two short lengths of wire. Using my combination wire stripper and crimper tool, I'll strip the insulation from both ends. I'll crimp a fork connector on one end of each wire. The banana plugs twist apart. The other end of each wire goes through the back of the banana plug. I folded the strands around the ends of the metal tube inside. Now I can screw the banana plug back together. I like to tug on the ends of the completed wires to make sure the connectors are really attached. These two short wires will go from the upper wall connectors to the terminal block. I've installed the wires at the upper connector along with the terminal block. I was a little concerned because the banana plugs stick out a little more than I thought they would, but a quick test with my NMRA gauge shows that the side clearance is okay. I'm using this MRC throttle pack to power the track. I've made a longer set of wires similar to the ones I used to connect the track to the upper plugs and connected them to my power supply. I'm using the red for variable AC and black for common. We just recently installed cabinets in a countertop in the back of the room. The throttle pack will sit on the counter and the wires plug into the lower receptacle. I used some cable ties on the wires to keep things neat. For this simple layout, this should be as complicated as the wiring gets. The last thing I need to do is finish the bridge girders. I've marked where I need to cut two of the girder pieces. I'm going to splice them together to make a longer piece. I'll need to remove the end of this one and about half of the other from here over. I'm using a miter box to cut the pieces. After sanding the ends, the gap is not too visible. I had some 60,000 styrene sheet in my stash of supplies. I'm going to use it to reinforce the resin girder castings and help hold everything together. I'll use a piece of girder to mark a cut line on the styrene that's just a bit taller than the girder. Then I'll score along the line with a utility knife. After a couple of passes, I can snap the plastic along the seam. I've cut four strips. I'll give them a light sanding on one side only for now with some 320 grit paper to knock down any high spots along the edges. I'll lightly sand the backs of the girders as well. The Scenic Express website recommends CA for the girders. I'll use it to bond a girder casting to a piece of styrene, putting the sanded side of the styrene against the back of the girder. I've left the plastic piece longer on purpose. Now I can use a separate piece of styrene to extend the backing and glue the second piece of girder. After the glue is dry, I have a girder assembly that behaves like a single piece of material. Now I can trim the excess styrene and sand the edges. Let's test fit the bridge girder. It's looking pretty good so far. Scenic Express recommends washing the girders in dish soap before painting. These are too large for our kitchen sink though. Instead, I'll rinse them with a garden hose, then spray on some Windex. I'll give them another rinse and leave them to dry overnight. Since I'm planning to use black as the final color, I'll start by spraying the completed girders with Tamiya Light Gray Fine Surface Primer. After giving the primer a little time to dry, I'm airbrushing the girders with Vallejo Model Air Black. This paint can be airbrushed without thinning. On the outer sides only, I'm airbrushing some microscale microgloss thinned with a few drops of Windex. I'll leave these to dry completely overnight. In keeping with my model of 3751, I got some Santa Fe decals for the bridge. This is Microscale set 87-1109. These are actually for HO, but it looks like they should fit in the relatively small spaces between the ribs on the bridge. I've measured and used a piece of scrap plastic to mark the center. 
After cutting out and soaking two of the Santa Fe Heralds in water, I'll position the decals and apply some microset. If the decal gets sticky, applying more microset can act as a lubricant to help get it into the proper place. Once I'm satisfied with the placement and the microset is dry, I'll apply Microsol. Microsol softens the decal and helps it conform to the surface of the model. Any air bubbles can be popped with the tip of a sharp hobby knife. The surface of the resin bridge girders is a little rough, so there were some bubbles, especially on the right side. More Microsol can be applied as needed until the decal looks like it's painted on. When done, there should be no bubbles or silvering. I've cut out Santa Fe's The Grand Canyon Line slogan from the decal sheet and have mocked it up in place in the center of the girder that faces into the game room. I cut the words Grand and Canyon apart to better fit them between the girder ribs. I'm starting with the outermost words, carefully measuring and using a straight edge to make sure they're aligned and level. Once I'm happy with the placement, I can fill in the lettering in between. Looking at the decals under a bright light from a variety of angles is a good way to spot any remaining bubbles or silvering. Apply more Microsol as needed. Once I'm satisfied that I've taken care of all the trapped air and bubbles, I'll use some clean water to get rid of any decal fluid residue. On smaller models, I often rinse them under a faucet, but since the bridge sides are large, I'm applying the water with a brush and then blotting it with a towel. After the bridge sides are dry, I'll spray some testers dull coat to reduce the shine and protect the decals. I didn't follow a prototype for the sides. I just wanted something that looked good. I chose two Santa Fe Heralds in the Grand Canyon Line slogan for the side that faces into the room. The other girder faces the window and won't be that visible, so I opted for a single Santa Fe Herald in the center. I'll be using some Loctite construction adhesive and screws to install the girders. I'm using number six by one half inch wood screws for the front. Since the back is less accessible, I'm using some hex head screws for the rear. I'm holding a drill bit in my fingers to make pilot holes in the girders. It's slow going, but I don't want to risk damaging the bridge. I'll follow up with my drill and a larger bit to make the holes larger to clear the screws. I'll spread some construction adhesive on the inside bottom edge of the girder. Then I'll press the girder in place. The construction adhesive grabs quickly and is very strong, so the screws are really just some added insurance. I'm putting one screw on each end of the girder. Because of the tight clearance, I had to use a small ratchet wrench to install the screws on the rear girder. In front, I can use my drill driver. I normally don't like out-of-scale details on a model, but the black screws aren't that visible against the black bridge girder. Also, this layout isn't really about being perfectly true to scale. I like the way the bridge looks. From outside the window, the Santa Fe Herald is just visible. All right, so I think everything's finished now and uh, we're ready to start, but before we actually run the train, we're gonna do a little christening, so. <laughs> Got a little bottle of champagne. Are you guys ready? <laughs> ah, I'm teasing. That would make such a mess, you guys. <laughs> Just joking. I did actually have a probably two month um, long roundabout though with Daniel to let me actually do that. So when the outside train comes, <laughs> come on, you gotta let me do it then. Those okay. are big and I okay. wouldn't do it on the train, you guys. I love the trains, right? All right, so here you go. Okay. Let's get our little, oops, I'm so excited. To stand over here though, just in case, you know, my luck, this it'll pop a, and hit me right in the head. This is a, like a beer bottle, kind of. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, but it still did it. It still kind of made a mess. <laughs> good thing we haven't done the floors yet. Oh, yes, right? All right. All right well, we we're go. christening the room, you guys, as well as the tree. <laughs> All right. Ooh, that one's definitely his. All right, I'm gonna hand you that back. Okay. And, you got it? Yeah. Yes. I'm gonna come over here, my mom's got hers, who is behind the scenes right now doing the videotaping. Wait, we gotta be. This way, this way, this way more. Huh. Yee! Cheers, you guys. This is so much hard work and it turned out so great, right? Yeah. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. We really hope you enjoy the video. It was yeah. a lot of hard work. <laughs> Cheers, sweetheart. Cheers. Okay. Here we go. The layout works pretty well. The train runs reliably with no derailments or unwanted uncoupling.
Other than one squeaky car, the noise level isn't too bad, so the rubber we installed under the track seems to be doing its job. Most likely that car just needs a little lube. I was initially concerned that the heavy locomotive might make the corners of the layout vibrate too much since there aren't as many supports there, but that doesn't seem to be a problem. I have noticed that the train slows down just a little bit on the side of the room opposite the controller, so at some point I may have to run some wires to the second terminal track I installed on that side to help improve the electrical flow. My model of 3751 came with traction tires which promptly shredded themselves the first time I ran the engine. I bought the engine used, so I have no idea how old it is. Eventually I'll need to get some new traction tires, but the engine pulls the 15 car train and can boost just fine without them. It's a pretty strong engine. All of my freight cars are by Atlas, and the Santa Fe caboose is from MTH Rail King. The engine is a Sunset third rail model. So oh, I think that's working pretty well. I uh, mentioned this on one of our other videos, but this is actually the first layout of any real size that I have actually completed in terms of building the original design that um, I came up with for it. Uh, now that doesn't mean that we might not do more to it later. Uh, you know, we might have little projects here and there, but by and large it's finished. And, yes. um, I and think it it's, can roll. Yeah, and it, it can run, and our game room is also almost finished. Yes. Um, so <laughs> we just need the floor and to put the furnishings in here, which most of which we already have. So yeah. super excited to start decorating. Yeah. So anyway, um, pretty happy with how it turned out. Yes. And, uh, thanks everybody for watching and I hope you enjoyed the build. Yes, definitely. Don't forget to like and subscribe you guys. Yes, please do that. Comments <laughs> below if yeah. you have any comments or questions about this build or anything else. And don't forget about questions for the Ask Dan and Nicole so show. We've gotten a cute, like a few, a couple that are really good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we got a, we so got a few. So keep them rolling in so that we could do the next one fairly soon, guys. I'm excited to answer some of them. Yeah. All right. So I guess that's it for this time. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Bye.